Good day, brothers and sisters. Today, in representing the St. Mary's Parish ACMS group, I wish to give my thoughts on the topic of fatherhood. It cannot be disputed that the Anglican Church Men's Society, the ACMS, has a fatherhood role in the church and wider community. A close examination of the objectives of the ACMS will reveal, among other things, that it supports Christian standards of fatherhood and family life, the mentoring of boys and young men, and the deepening of the spiritual life of its members through prayer and meditation and systematic study of the Bible, which it does at its monthly general meetings. This is in order to bind churchmen together and to promote the glory of God. It must be knighted. Fathers have a God-given role as a head of the family. He is priest, mentor, counselor, provider, disciplinarian, and exemplar. 1 Corinthians 11.3, 1 Timothy 5.8, Proverbs 1 verse 8 admonishes, Hear, my child, your father's instruction. The father must direct his family and inculcate the love of God in them so that they follow the biblical lifestyle. Therefore, the father has to proffer honesty, integrity, truthfulness, and every other virtue of godly teaching to his family, his male peers, his mentees, and even other fathers with whom he interacts in his temporal existence. For him to effectively perform this role, he must acquire wisdom, patience, and persistence all enveloped in love. This is not to project the father as perfect, for to err is human, but by turning to God to fulfill his role in the household, he will imbue his family with spiritual growth and maturity. His children will also learn to avoid bad company, having been instructed in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 Jesus taught his disciple Peter to have faith in God. We see that in the Gospel according to Mark chapter 11 verse 22. Again, Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount told us to ask. Ask God for whatever we may need. Ask God as he hears the prayer of the righteous man. Proverbs 15 verse 29. Let all fathers present now join in prayer to Almighty God for our perseverance and the spiritual growth in our family life. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your grace and tender mercies in helping us to fulfill our fatherly duty in our home. Grant more especially the ACMS the strength to continue toiling in the vineyard despite the obstacles encountered in successfully executing this ministry which you have assigned to them. We implore you to bring into its fold many more fathers and young men, so that the work of the men in church may continue with alacrity and sincerity. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Much thanks to the ACMS, the Anglican Church Men's Society, for their presentation and message on nurturing males into manhood during our celebration of a Feast of Sunday entitled Responding to God's Call. We now present a video on the life of Sunday and reflections of his work in the church narrated by John Grindy coming out of the United Kingdom. Do enjoy. Thank you. This story begins in Ireland. It's the tale of an Irish monk who travelled across the sea to the west coast of Scotland to join a monastery on the small island of Iona. 
It was this monastery that King Oswald contacted and asked them to send someone to teach the Northumbrian people about Christianity. The person they sent was Aidan. Actually, Aidan wasn't the first person that the monks sent from Iona. First was a monk called Corman, but he lasted no time at all. He came back and he was really unhappy. He said that the Northumbrians were barbarians and they would never learn to become Christians. So the monks were in despair. How on earth were they going to satisfy King Oswald? And then one of them said, uh, Corman, could you not have been a bit more gentle? And all of the others looked at each other and they came to the same conclusion. Brother Aidan, they said, we need you to go and teach the Northumbrians about God. Aidan was a really good choice because he was kind and gentle with the Northumbrians. So King Oswald told him that he could have some land to build a monastery. And he chose an island which was cut off by the sea twice a day. When the tide went out, the monks could walk across these sands to the mainland in order to teach people about God. And when the sea came back in again, they could be on their own to work and to pray. You can still visit the island by walking across this causeway, though nowadays you're much more likely to cross it by car rather than on foot. And the island's called Lindy's Farm. Though often, nowadays, it's called Holy Island as well because it used to be the home of two saints. Aidan built his monastery here on the island, which today is quite a busy little place with houses and sometimes there are lots of visitors, but in his time, it was much wilder, surrounded by nature and the sea and a really great place to build a monastery. Aidan wanted his monastery to have a school probably the first school in Northumbria, where boys could come to learn to read and write in Latin as well as in English, and learn how to teach others about Christianity, because Aidan knew that Christianity would only stay in Northumbria if the next generation passed it on. So what can I tell you about Aidan, the monk and the teacher? Well, he certainly seems to have stuck to his idea about being gentle with the Northumbrians, he used to walk everywhere, so it was easy to stop and talk to them. And he came across as somebody who was ordinary, not somebody who was too important. And he always thought about people. There's a lovely story about him giving away a horse to a beggar. I should probably mention that it wasn't his horse. It belonged to the king, and there was a bit of bother when the king found out. But Aidan might have been gentle he was still tough enough to stand up to kings and he soon put this king in his place about the horse. Aidan lived his life like the Christian message that he taught. He was generous with his time and he cared about the sick and the poor. Uh, he didn't live a dramatic life because that's not the sort of bloke that he was but uh, he helped people towards faith by being like them, by showing them how to live a Christian life. He was like a beacon of God's love. He was the beacon of the North. Sometimes his legacy gets a bit overshadowed because of another even more famous saint who also lived on Lindy's farm, and you'd hear about him later on. But it's important to remember that it was Aidan who first introduced Christianity into this region. In fact, the north of England as a whole and much of the Midlands was first converted to Christianity by monks from Lindisfarne, and lots of them would have been taught by Aidan himself. So finally, let's hear what Bede has got to say about Aidan. Aidan was not angry or greedy. He hated pride. He was a man of peace and love, purity and humility. Aidan spent time studying the Bible and praying, and he comforted the sick and protected the poor. 